All right, guys, before we get started today, a big thank you to our partner, Microsoft Windows 11, the official operating system of the NFL and the exclusive sponsor of the LA Chargers. The all new Windows 11, they're here to bring you closer to what you love, like the Chargers and the final drive. Learn about all the awesome new features of Windows 11 at windows.com. And welcome in, guys, to our final, final drive of the season. For Haley Elwood, I'm Chris Harry. Chargers season ends in overtime in Las Vegas in perhaps one of the crazier regular season games in NFL history in week 18. Haley, I'll let you kick things off. I mean, it was it was a game where, you know, I think everybody was jokingly talking about a tie throughout the entire week. And we found ourselves with seconds left in overtime with that being a very real possibility. Unfortunately for the Chargers, it was not. How crazy was that? I mean, I'm sure it was the same for your Twitter timeline, but as that those final seconds ticked off in overtime, it's just a flood of tweets. Like, is this happening? Are we doing this? Is this what's going on? And it, it was just absolutely bananas. I mean, just a tough way, a tough way to go out. But, you know, this Chargers team fought back. Justin Herbert certainly fought back and did everything he could to score 15 unanswered in the fourth and even get it to overtime. I mean, at one point, I can't do math right now. It's too early and we were up way too late. But the, <laughs> the Raiders were up, <clears throat> excuse me, so many by, I think, multiple scores at least that on NBC, they're teasing them as the games next week. Like they're already teasing the Raiders going to uh, Cincinnati or if they tie going to Kansas City and the Chargers were nowhere to be found on that graphic. And then, of course, as Justin Herbert has done many times this season, he willed this team back. He put the team on his back, converted all those fourth downs in that fourth quarter. But it was just almost, you know, too little too late. And I think when you look at the trajectory of how this game went down, Things that played this Chargers plagued, excuse me, this Chargers team throughout the season came back in this game. You know, third down defense and, and the run defense really ended up sort of just just coming back to bite them. And it was almost too much to overcome. And they they did an incredible job. And, and kudos again to Justin Herbert and, and what he did in that fourth quarter. And and this team came so close, but it just wasn't enough. And unfortunately, the season does end uh, today at, at nine and eight in the first year under Brandon Staley, but they showed a lot of fight. Um, but yeah, that tie scenario was very, very close to that happening to your point as well. It certainly was. And we'll get into Justin Herbert and perhaps the greatest drive I've ever seen. 19 <laughs> plays, 83 yards in two minutes and six seconds. Which but felt like two hours. It felt <laughs> like two hours. And, and keep in mind the, the drive before that, Joey Bosa had a strip sack. Yeah. Justin Jones was this close from recovering it, like this close to recovering it. Had he recovered it, there's a short field for Justin to, to score and, and send the game to overtime or go for two or whatever. Um, the fact that they had to punt and, and Justin put together that drive, 19 plays, 83 yards in, in two minutes and six seconds. You're right, Haley. It felt like a, a, an extra game, that, that drive. I forget who it was, but there was someone who tweeted, this drive is so weird. I have no concept of how long this Chargers offense has been on the field and where they are on the field. And that was how I felt watching it because everything was this long down and distance, right? That's what they were converting. It wasn't the short, the short conversions on that drive. It was, you get to fourth down and it's like fourth and 10 and all right. <laughs> there's your conversion. And, and that's what was going to get you in and keep the drive alive. I mean, even, even the, the drive before um, with the Joshua Palmer touchdown, that was on, that was fourth and 21. Fourth like, and 21. Absolutely insane. Stuff you, but, it's, but that, it's stuff you never see. It, it, like Justin <laughs> Herbert was doing stuff. And I, and I said, we'll talk about it in a bit. Let's just talk about it now because it's, it's stuff you would never see. It's like once in a decade type <laughs> stuff he was he was doing like yeah he was converting every fourth and ten he was converting third downs um the the thing that the pass to palmer on, on fourth and 21 was just bananas <laughs> and then for for him to to keep getting up because he was getting hit a lot. max crosby was 
one of the best players on the field yesterday and, and yeah. they were getting some pressure on Justin. Justin continued to get up and, and persevere Deliver. and kind of try to will this team to a win. Um, but, you know, I, I just go to the beginning of the game. I thought it was so important, Haley, for the Chargers to get off to a hot start. They, yeah. They're more talented offensively th- than the Raiders. And, and I thought if, if you get out in front of these guys, you kind of impose your will early. And it, it just was not meant to be. The, the Andre Roberts fumble um, kind of set things up for the Raiders, and they had all the momentum early. Um, mm-hmm. Some uncharacteristic things, you know, drops – Drops have been kind of a theme throughout the year, but you know, when it matters most, like poorly timed. Yeah, they were poorly timed for sure. I think, you know, and that's what they did in week four, right? They got off to this crazy hot start. They really, it, it re- never really fell until kind of that third quarter that the Raiders were even in that game because the Chargers just dominated in every facet of it. So, yeah, I mean, I would totally have agreed with you, especially when you go into a hostile environment. I mean, I know you were there, you could speak to it, but it looked very loud on television it was loud. Um, that I can't imagine what that's, that's like, even when you're trying to communicate, but yeah, it just, it, it, it felt like the Raiders had the momentum and there were certain points where the Chargers felt like they could kind of get it back a little bit, but, but they were just getting after it all night. And when you look at that defense, it's obviously led by Gus Bradley has so many former chargers on it. We've named him even other guys like Tyron Johnson. He was the one who forced that fumble on Andre yeah. Roberts on special teams. But, um, but I think when you, when you and I have been around these chargers teams, we've been around Gus defenses and they're known as, you know, bend, but don't break. And I think that was what happened last night that especially in overtime, they can give up those huge chunk plays, but then they held the chargers and, and only allowed the field goal there to be able to tie the game and the Raiders obviously got the ball back and never let it go after that point. But, but yeah, I think, um, I think starting kind of slow, it, it almost felt at the beginning kind of like Baltimore, kind of like Houston, kind of like Denver, like, Ooh, is this going to be one of those games? I mean, just yeah. uncharacteristic, like passes behind Austin Eckler that he couldn't take in and, and, things of that sort, but they were able again to kick it into gear. And in that fourth quarter was absolutely amazing. I mean, we have seen Justin Herbert in prime time, just ab- turn it on. And, and it's, I said this to Shannon Farron on the radio pre-show hit that, that I did. And it's, it's stuff that we see every week. Right. But when it's on the national stage, it obviously gets magnified, but what he did yesterday. And, and again, in that fourth quarter was like you said, just stuff of legend at this point, this kid's legend is growing even just with his second season in the league and his ceiling is so, so high. And it's a bummer, obviously. And I know Chargers fans and I think the national media too is bummed that you're not getting a hot Justin Herbert in the playoffs um, because of what he's able to do. But it was just, again, I think just a little too little, too late to kind of will back. And it's tough. These games are really tough and it's a divisional game. It's a, yeah. it's a playoff divisional game. And we essentially, and we know how tough divisional games are in general because they've got that extra little juice. These are two teams that are obviously extremely familiar with one another, but, um, but it was just tough. But again, kudos to him for, for what he was able to do and to overcome a lot of the attrition, as you mentioned that this team faced and faced early on in this game as well. 29-14, it, it probably stinks for Chargers fans even more to come all the way back and, and to lose in the fashion that they lost. But, you know, I think one of the turning points, too, and we could talk about this right before the half, third and 23, yeah. um, that draw gets converted into a first down. And then the, the pass interference penalty that that sets up the Raiders at the one, essentially giving them a touchdown there. That really took the wind out of the Chargers' sails. And, you know, second half – not be able to convert that fourth down and mm-hmm. deep in your own territory um, led to three points. So there was, I think, a, a collection of things throughout the course of the game that just became just too much to overcome yeah. for this team. And, you know, Justin, he can't do it all himself. And I, right. I, I go back to week four when, when the Chargers probably had their best defensive performance of the entire season against Josh Jacobs in that running game, only allowed 48 yards. 174 yards on the ground. And, you know, we, we talked about the Chargers being at full strength and, and being healthy. Um, run defense was an issue this year. Third down defense was an issue. Those are two important categories that they're going to have to clean up in 2022. Absolutely. I mean, that's the point, right? If when you look at how the season panned out and, and what happened and 
maybe some weaknesses that this team has. Those are two areas that definitely need to get shored up and need to get cleaned up. And, you know, we'll see this team has a, a number of free agents, particularly on the defensive side of the ball. Well, I'm sure you know, Tom Telesco is one of those guys who takes care of his own. Obviously it's that Bill Polian draft and develop philosophy and resign. And I'm sure some of those guys will be back, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. I mean, but when you look at those specific areas, it's kind of like you go to back to last year, right. And you go the offensive line, the offensive line needs to get retooled. And Telesco even said, I remember in the off season, we're not necessarily one offensive line away from winning the Super Bowl, but that was a huge investment that they made this offseason. And that unit too faced attrition. This isn't specifically that right side this year. But I think you could look at, at the defense, you could look at the run defense specifically and go, maybe that's kind of the goal to shore up heading into 2022. You've got the quarterback and that solves a lot of the questions and a lot of the problems that you look at other teams who are on the outside looking in and a number of them have questions at that position specifically. So you're good. You're good there. The kid's a stud. There was no sophomore slump. Everything's gravy. But you have other areas that you can look at. And, and it again, I kind of go back to last year. The offensive line was one of them. They took care of that to a point, faced some attrition this season, but were able to, you know, overcome it for the most part. Last night was obviously very tough with, with Max Crosby and the impact that he had, but yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if maybe kind of shoring up that defense, maybe that defensive line a bit is, uh, is something that this team does moving forward. Yeah. I mean, you point to the end of overtime. I mean, you knew a run was coming and the Raiders were able to get that field goal closer. I think at that point it was a 57 yarder and Brandon Staley said that his, his goal in calling that timeout was to make sure that that field goal was as long as possible. So you could potentially tie and make the mm -hmm. postseason. And, you know, I think it comes down to simple execution. You know, if, if you, if you stop the run at that point, maybe that field goal is a little bit longer Maybe he misses it, um, and maybe you're in the postseason. It, it's it's just amazing. We go 18 games, Haley, and we look at everything that's happened in in each of these games throughout the year. We've had some wild ones too. Like I, I feel like from Cleveland to Pittsburgh, I, I'm I'm missing a couple as as I'm talking here. But like to end it, like you know the Kansas City game on Thursday night, the Kansas City game, the first one in Week Three, um, to end it the way it ended like overall for the NFL, like the entire nation was glued to that game. The city of Pittsburgh was wondering if they were even going to get in because a tie eliminates them, knocked them out the chargers and the Raiders in. So, yeah. you know, I, I think it was good for the league. It obviously was very difficult for the chargers and you're right with, with number 10 under center, this franchise is going to be playing a lot of those primetime games and um, yeah. he's going to be in the playoffs more often than not for sure. Um, I, I try to take a step back because I know as, as difficult as the losses for Chargers fans, football's fun, man. And yeah. it's, it's, it's fun to just kind of appreciate the moments of, of being able to, to watch a game like that and see that unfold. And it, it was not uh, the result that Chargers fans wanted, but like, 10 years from now, you're going to be like, I, I saw Justin Herbert go 19 <laughs> plays, 83 yards in two minutes. I mean, yeah. that's the stuff of, that's the stuff of legend. It is. And I mean, you and I, we've both worked in the NBA before. We're both fans of, of the MLB and, and other sports, but there is no better show than the NFL. There just isn't. And, and I think a lot of it also has to do, even though the season is a game longer this year, every single one of those games counts so much. And and unfortunately for the Chargers team, you know, that also was a factor. You go back to the Houston loss, did end up kind of playing a role in how the season panned out, but there's no better show on television. There's no better reality show on television than the NFL. And that game last night, I think, yeah, to what you said, I, I'm not sure anyone was happier than the NFL. It literally was, I saw a tweet. It was the longest final week of the regular season timing wise. And it's because this game, well, I know the Rams and Niners game went to overtime. This game finished overtime, went to the very last second of overtime. Um, it was what exactly what they wanted, exactly what they wanted. Didn't get the tie. It was very close. I enjoyed the tweets from uh, Chase Claypool and Cam Hayward from the Steelers who were just freaking out, I think on Twitter. Um, and obviously the Raiders win got them in, but, uh, but it was, it was a remarkable game. It was great football. The chargers this whole year have played even that Thursday night game against Kansas city. I think a lot of people would have called that the best game of the season 
until this one <laughs> rolled around. I think this one now, now takes the cake just because of all the back and forth and the heroics from Herbert in the fourth and, and what happened obviously and transpired in overtime. And yeah, like you said, it, it didn't go the, the way that the Chargers fans would have wanted it to go, but I think we can kind of all step back and appreciate just what a crazy game that was. And also this team finished above 500 in a year with a brand new coaching staff, a brand new scheme, just newness all around a quarterback in his second year, learning his second system in as many years. And, and I think that, you know, if you can want to kind of look at optimism moving forward, it's, they were able to to do some really good things this year. You know, there's some things, obviously the need to get short up, but there is optimism moving forward and it starts with number 10 for sure. Yeah. And you keep in mind, number 10 is in the second year, just finished the second year. Uh, the, the chargers are in good hands with their franchise quarterback and, um, I think they enter free agency with the second most cap space in the Money. NFL. Um, there's, there's a lot of optimism. I, I think it is as difficult as it is to say that right now, because I know Chargers fans are upset. Um, there is optimism and it, just be thankful. There's a franchise quarterback under center because we, we see around the league, how hard it is to win. And when you don't have that guy, yeah. It's even harder. And there's a lot of teams right now searching for that guy. Um, the Chargers got him. And, you know, we're going to keep you up to date throughout the offseason with the draft and free agency and the combine uh, as we kind of turn the page on 2021 uh, a week earlier than we wanted to. But, but nonetheless, um, the 21 season is in the books for Haley Elwood. I'm Chris Harey. This has been our final, final drive presented by Windows 11.